We're looking at tares. And along with tares, you have to have false prophets. A big breakthrough for me, it's not the text, the text is in Jude. But the big breakthrough for me was in Matthew chapter 7. That scripture said, not everyone who said to be Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. That's your clue. God just gave that to me. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. You know what's those things? Up river? It wasn't his will. None of them were his will. His will is that we believe his word and act, and act in faith or what we've heard. So he told him, I'll profess it to him, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity, and he called their iniquity work, iniquitous work, prophesying, casting out devils, and whatever works, God said, that's all works for iniquity. Why? Because it was not intended to do. Simple. And of course, they are supported Verse 15 by false prophets. So, let's go to Jude. Jude is a power packed one chapter book. And the Lord allowed me not to preach through the entire book, verse by verse. Well, let's focus on verse number. 11, a cutoff number. Woe well, unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. That's the message today. chapter 4 and find out. process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. I believe him bringing his offering had a lot to do with his attitude towards God. You cannot have the right perspective of God and the proper desire to please God and bring God something that he doesn't want. He just can't. Cain had the attitude that this is what I want to give God and that God should accept it. Never mind the fact that God told him what to bring. Cain just decided for God, I'm not bringing that. 
he may have been the first animal, animal activist of his time, protecting animals, which would make him the first vegetarian. I think Cain thought it was wrong to kill lambs and offer them for a sacrifice to God. Never mind the fact he hadn't made a lamb in his life. The lambs that were available were made by God. The commandment to kill the lamb for a sacrifice was given by God. We shall know with basic knowledge that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. The very first sacrifice, blood sacrifice, in the Bible was done by God himself. It's subtle when you read it. unto his wife, remember they were naked, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothing. Those skins that clothed Adam and Eve once were the covering of an animal. And God took the animal's life, took the animal's blood, and took his skin and covered Adam and Eve. An offering given to God without blood involved says there's no sin in me. I don't have any sin. And a person who would approach God with the attitude of having no sin cannot ever possibly love God or give God what he wants because they think anything I give God should be good enough. Right? This is his worship. His mental frame of mind in approaching God. I won't bring a blood sacrifice because I don't need one. I have no sin. Nothing's worse than having an opinion of ourselves that's out of whack. You know anybody? We all just don't. Yeah. Just wish you or somebody could sit them down and tell them what the real deal is. So they're looking at all that. It's hard to do. Because they won't hear you. They're so, I've met people who are so stuck on themselves that to tell them what they're really like, all they're going to do is get mad at you. Here, so why bother? Why go there? Particularly when they're grown, with the child, there's a chance. They change their mind, change their outlook, change their action. But when a person is grown, with the conceited, ill-informed opinion of themselves. I figured their parents already did the damage. And I'm not their parent, so I just leave them alone. Hope I'm not in a situation where I have to interact with them very often. I was asking about one of the members who I hadn't seen in a long time. And I found out that one of you were in touch with them, and you gave a report on what they were doing. The report was that they've been busy, working, a lot of work. But they do watch the videos on YouTube. I wish they hadn't told me. I was in a better state of mind just knowing that they were absent. When I heard that, it just messed me up. I read a poem in time. The poem said, if everyone in church were just like me. The poem came to my mind right away. 
I said, everybody in church just like him, there'd be nobody in church. I'd preach to empty chairs every Sunday. Then, of course, I wonder, when does this individual operate his office as a priest to God, offering to God a sacrifice of his lips, the fruit of his lips, in praise and thanksgiving? When do they do that? During the video? I mean, God expects a live offering from us, ourselves. He expects us to assemble in his house and sing praises to him. And if you're not in his house, it's not likely you're singing praises to him. Just things just go together. When I preach, I need you here as an inspiration to deliver God's word. When you're not here, it makes a difference. There are certain individuals who have become so dear to me in the way of the word of God that when they can't make it, I'm a little off balance. They affect me and the service just that much. There's always a great service when everybody shows up. Always. Because those who miss, whatever service it is, I know whatever material that God delivered on that occasion, he has to do it again. Because they weren't there. Jesus had to make two appearances after the resurrection. The first appearance with the, with the apostles, but Thomas wasn't there. So he had to come back a second time just for Thomas. And he did. When the word of God goes for it, he gives it. But he has to come back a second time for the ones who missed. And what I hate about it is it slows, it slows God down mm -hmm. as far as his word. I don't want to come to church and hear the same message again. But God has to do that. And in our case, he has to do it over and over and over again because rare is the time or the occasions when we're all here in one setting. Mm -hmm. So he has to come back in his love. You know, I, I wish he'd just go on. But that's not how he operates. He's not made that way. I said, this person's working, all this work. I said, well, if they tithe and what they're working, that'd be good. God has blessed you that much that you're so busy that you can't even drop God off an offering. Mm -hmm. wow. I said, if everybody in church were like him, I'd be working another job. And I'd be preaching from home <coughs> if I were doing that at all. So the one who's in touch with this individual, give him my message. He probably missed this particular area of YouTube, because that's how Satan runs things. Mm -hmm. But if you talk to him, give him that message. All right? Amen. When we get too busy to give God service, something's wrong. Every breath we get, every heartbeat we get, comes from God. Amen. So I ought to take that breath and that heartbeat and at least let him see it. And let him hear it. And so on, Lord, I'm still beating. Yeah. He said, let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. And praise God in his sanctuary. It's his house. It's a big deal. Yeah. Cain's offering, when you look at it, and can <clears throat> put in your mind Hebrews 12, when it talks about us having grace to serve God acceptably, with reverence and godly fear, his offering omitted all three points. Number one is not acceptable to God. God said that in verse number five, verse four. And Abel he also brought of the persons of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. If God can respect your service, <coughs> what good is it? Particularly in the supposed to be directed to him. But as the can and his to his offering, he had not respect. One thing these two verses show us is that one of the greatest acts of worship to God is your offering. He pays attention to it. And he accepts your 
worship with respect, you and your offering, or he disrespects you and your offering. He can do that because he doesn't need an offering. You consider that? Yeah. I mean, he owns the cattle in the thousand hills. He said, the gold in every mine is mine. The earth is mine and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. He does not need an offering. And so for God to respect your offering, that's a big deal. To be able to give an offering to God is a big deal. And I've said many times in this territory that as a parent, you're successful when you've taught your children to bring an offering and worship God. That's all God demands of you. If you get a college degree, that's fine. If you keep them in nice clothes, that's fine. If you feed them the best of food, that's fine. But God is not concerned about that. He's concerned about what you have done with your child regarding me. That's how you pass with God. So once to Cain and do his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth. That's the matter of their man. He had to have a bad attitude in the beginning to get this way. If you're sincere in worshiping God, when God decided not to respect his offering in him, he'd have repented. Changed his mind and said, Lord, I'm sorry. I thought this would be okay. Although I know you said you didn't want this, but go through the motion. I thought this would be okay, God, and this is the last fruit you're going to ever get from me. In fact, if you just wait here at the altar, I'm going to get a lamb right now. And I'll be right back. What did he do? He got mad in church. They're in church right here. They're bringing an offering to the Lord. This is church. And God speaking to him personally in church, and rather than hear God's voice and say amen to it, he got an attitude. And his whole face, I mean, can you get look at the contrast? I'm sure when Cain brought this offering to the Lord, the fruit of the ground, his chest was sticking out. He had a hop in his step, laid all that fruit out, and this beautiful fruit, then stand back and wait for God's approval. And God said, I don't want that. In fact, I don't respect you for bringing it to me. I don't respect you for bringing it, and I don't respect what you brought. Oh, God, I'm very sorry. I mean, I know you said what you wanted, but in my vanity, I thought you'd accept this. Now I know that you won't, but you won't, and you don't. It's gone. You should have been busy pulling that fruit up, throwing the bag, throw the fruit in the bag away, and come with the lamb. Instead, he went from this to this. His countenance just failed. And got very mad. Very wrong. And God decided not to let this ride. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Only a parent would really understand this. Sometimes your kids get mad at you. And you stop and say, What are you mad about? I suggest you get unmanned <laughs> real quick. And things have changed in over time. But in my day, if you were wroth, they never knew it. That's right. That's right. That's right. You got to you were wroth with a smile. You might stick your tongue around that to turn the back. <laughs> but while your face was through there, that's <coughs> Yes, sir. No, sir. No, I man. Total respect. So God just checks him. Why are you wrong? God knew why. He wanted Cain to admit why he's mad. Oftentimes, God asks, God asks us questions, not for him, his own self. He knows everything. It's a, matter, it's a means of us searching ourselves and asking, yeah, why am I mad? It's like getting into a conversation sometimes, my wife will tell me sometimes. Why you got an attitude? <laughs> I don't want to answer. <laughs> Whenever she asks me that, because I know when she asks me the question, I shouldn't have one. Right. So she just pulls out. Why, 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 why are you mad at me? Well, you know, because I'm 
family being the spotlight. <laughs> so I gotta put some light on you, like a man of truth. <laughs> and why is your countenance falling? God knew why, but I don't think God understood. He knew, but his heart wouldn't buy it. Why are you mad at me? Why is your, why your little face changed in my presence? One of the worst things I think a person can do to God and worship God is to come to God in his house with an attitude. With a face. He doesn't deserve that. We ought to enter to his gates with singing and thanksgiving and a smile on our face and happy. Yeah. Even if you're not. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. And too often, depending on what we're going through, we want to share. <laughs> I don't feel like singing today. So you come to this house and not sing. It's better not to come to this house. Amen. Just stay out. You have to look at God's house in the perspective of your own house. There's just some things that I'm going to let a visitor do in my house. Right. You're not going to come knock on my door with an attitude. Open the door and you know, you got a face on. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know where you came from, <laughs> but you need to go back there or skip this spot and go to where you're going, but you're not coming in here. Right. I have enough bad stuff going on here right now. And I don't feel like yours. Mm -hmm. You know? Or to come into your house and just come in and just sit down and not talk. Well, why'd you come? <laughs> You just should have stayed home. You come to my house, I'm having a good day, a nice day, and you're going to come in and bring your glum in here and, and, and pollute this atmosphere? Get out. Is that what you do? Yes. You sure ask them, you know, well, well, what's, what's wrong? Right. Give them a chance. They already have something really bad going on. What's wrong? I'll bet this will tell you first. But if you ask them what's wrong, they should be ready to give you an answer as to why they're at your door that way. Yeah. If they can't, you see, you, you respect me that much to come and bring your nasty attitude here? Well, you better enjoy the time you're here because you won't open this door anymore. Now, yeah, is that, is that what, would that be your attitude? Why can't that be God's? That's right. Why can't it be His? God, in his grace, gave Cain a chance to make amends. He could have slammed the door on him, Cain. He could have just stopped that next heartbeat <coughs> that Cain was having at God's expense with his very raw attitude and fallen countenance. God says, okay, fine. Just stop the next one. Stop the next prayer. Now let's see how your countenance looks. <laughs> Like our parents told us. You want to have an attitude? I'll give you a reason. Remember? No, I'll, I'll give you a reason. You can take this, that look off your face, or I'll slap it off. If we got to that point, believe me, they really tried to slap it off. <laughs> Whereby it would never appear again. It's not their presence. <laughs> I know who coined, who coined the phrase, the expression, but I love it. They say, you know, I brought you in here. <laughs> and I can take you out. <laughs> and make another one just like you. <laughs> That's the kicker to say that. Make, make one just like you. <laughs> My dad told me that one time. <laughs> you better send it to me again. I don't want to you know that I got replaced by one just like me. Here's the grace of God. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? God's saying, these are my terms. Remember the text? My ways aren't your ways? He said, these are my terms. Meet my terms, I'll accept you. Although I'm upset with you, I'll change my heart and my mind and my attitude and accept you and bless you. Right now. Only God can do that. Sometimes you get into a situation where we're mad at someone, that's the kind of wear off. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You tell the person, look, don't talk to me right now. <laughs> Give me a little space. Right. Okay. <laughs> so talk. Okay, right now I'm just mad to talk. Well, God goes from having his heart broken and his feelings hurt to making an offer of acceptance. He said, the, the, the terms are still good. Bring me what I'm asking you for, and we're back where we were before it started. Wow. Is that wonderful? Yes. yes. And if thou doest not well, yes. sin life at the door. He's saying that the, the, the picture here is that of a wild animal crouching outside the door, wanting to get in and attack the person inside. So if you don't do right, do well, you got an animal outside that's going to take you out. Sin. The only thing between you and this animal is me. Right now. Knowing that, you think he changed real quick. And unto thee shall that wild animal desire be. He's going to focus on you. But if you do well, you roll over him. He won't rule you. So Cain left that service and talked with Abel, his brother. They're going to talk about two things. One or two things. Their discussion had to be Cain trying to persuade Abel that he's right. Or persuade Abel how wrong he is. In spite of the fact that God made it very clear that Abel's okay and you're not. Just make it right in church. Why leave church and emphasize it was already bad? That's going to eventually lead to murder. This guy didn't repent. His philosophy was, I'm going to bring God good works, good according to my estimation of good. Right. How the world can you bring God good fruit from a cursed ground? <laughs> Impossible. If the ground wasn't cursed, his hands was involved in the cultivation of it, in the picking of it, and that cursed it. <laughs> well, he's a sinner. But, you know, God should accept this. Tares are notorious for good works. Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In your name cast out devils? In your name have done many wonderful works? Yes, I never knew you. One of the lines from a movie, or movies sometimes, is when they tell the individual to get out of my face. Or worse yet, tell somebody else, don't look at that person, tell somebody else, get this person out of my face. Heard that in two movies. Can't think of the name of either one. They're talking. In the field, Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. There are only, so many times, there are only Two churches in this world. God's and Satan's. Satan has appeased and pleased the people of this earth by giving everybody what they want. You want to be with Kyle Sacred here. Gives it to them and gives them a fable to go with it, but they can buy it. How many religions are there in this world? Hundreds. But they all have one author. Mm -hmm. Satan. He's in charge of all of them. Remember the movie Devil's Advocate? They say, I'm a fan of man. My job is to please man. I want to worship. My job is to provide for you. God just has one. When Cain killed Abel and went and lived in the land of Nod, 
now became headquarters for workers, a religion that thrived on works. Trust me. He's the high priest. He becomes a priest of those. He becomes a false prophet of that particular message. And believe me, he had a following. Cain was worshipped. He was looked upon as somebody great, as a great religious leader. Because of what he believed. Never mind the opposed to God believed. They don't care about what God believes. This is, this is what Cain, Cain brought, and God was wrong to reject it, and we're going to follow him and support him. Hmm. I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm t there's nothing in the Bible says that. I'm just telling you from experience. Nod became headquarters for all those who wanted to bring God good works. Hmm. It was headquarters. For good deeds. I dare say that Cain probably started that expression. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my good deed for the day. Yeah. I never subscribed to that. But when I see in the Bible, good deeds are never something we decide to do. They're brought to us. And when God brings them to us, it's usually something we don't want to do. At least not for that person. Right, right or wrong? That's right. right. Good deeds become like a test. <laughs> well, I don't say anything, but I'm not going to ask me to do that. For them. They don't speak to me. Because I know I do it anyhow. The Samaritan is a perfect example of a good deed. He had places to go, people to see, things to do, and he's on his trip, and there's this man laying in the road, Jericho Road, wounded. That the priest had already passed by, and the Levite had already passed by, and now it's on him. God just puts things in the road sometimes. That she would not, he didn't, he didn't leave the house that day looking for that man. He had something to do, like they did. But having the love of God should have brought his heart by the Holy Ghost, he couldn't just pass by the man. He stopped, got off his, whatever he was riding, bandaged the man up, took Kevin, put the man on his, on his beach, and took him to the hospital. And paid part of his bill, and said, if that's not enough, when I come back this way next time, I'll pay the rest of it. That's a good deed. Good works are motivated by the Holy Ghost, not by what we decide to do. We're going to always decide to do something that we can do. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take us through too many changes. You know? right, right. It's going to make us look good. Right? That's right. Now, if it involves too much money doing the good deed, we pass that one up. <laughs> <laughs> we try to find the least expensive good deed. <laughs> Preferably one that's cost me nothing. <laughs> that's a good deed. Okay? I'll walk away across the street. I'll walk across the street. Carry the groceries. That's a custom thing. Cain became the author of good deeds. He did not bring God an acceptable offering. His offering he brought to God was without reverence. His attitude afterwards was without reverence. He should have just <coughs> avoided the being very wroth and the fallen countenance just out of reverence to God. God deserved that. And the last one, godly fear. As I said, ask the question, which came first? His attitude or his worship? Not because he had the wrong attitude at the gate. And his attitude corrupted his worship. It was got all over. You know, godly fear would have said, okay, confess him. But all right, okay, I'm sorry. Instead, he left the meeting with God and went out to his brother and tried to persuade his brother he's right. Which means God's wrong, and that's no refer. That's no fear whatsoever. I go down here rejecting God's advice itself is a state of fearlessness. How dare we? We who are made by God, who are creatures of God, to be in opposition to God any kind of way at all. Man. God's word goes for it. It finds us. You got two choices. You can get mad. That God or get mad at me, which is the same thing. Or you can say, hmm, that's me. Rather than wonder who told him. Some sort of being told. Now you got somebody you're speaking to because you think what because what you think they did. Or a mess. You know? We tell somebody, I, you, th you think that's also don't tell me what I think. Let's start with you think I think that. That's, that's, that qualifies. Don't say you think, and that's why you did because you think. No, you can't say that. 
<laughs> you don't know what I'm thinking? You don't know my heart? Nothing else. Just so you think I'm thinking. But we'll think of something about somebody, not even tell them that we're thinking it, and act according to how we think. Mm. I think it's finished on me, so I ain't speaking to you no more. Would well, you know you did? I'm sure it's them, do you know? Well, I'll go that and do you know? Well, no. Well, then drop the attitude. No, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I think you did. Yes, yeah, somebody in this congregation I'm speaking to, you're not in God's will. Amen. Amen. That's right. I'm going to put that say. Because salvation will act that way. That's right. That's right. Say. It just doesn't. If you're in that state right now, I suggest you make amends real quick. Amen. Because God can lead you in that state. Amen. He didn't make a second advance to Cain. Wow. After that one advance, he made him and offered repentance again. He says, Cain, if you killed Abel, God gave him a mark, and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in Nod, and him and God was all over. Mm. And God let him go. He doesn't do it. We had a message some time ago about Nadab and Abihu. Remember them? Mm -hmm. They're going to improve on the worship of God. They offered strange fire to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And while they're offering strange fire, a fire came out from the altar and burned them up. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things that are written for our example. God's saying, I'm not playing about my worship. You don't adjust it or make changes to it or worship me according to how you feel. He expects the very best of your worship every time you come. You can come with cancer, you can come with a headache, you can come with whatever you come with. He expects you to worship him in, in spirit and truth. That's right. Every time. Amen. Our feelings don't count. In his presence. Hmm. We had another situation we preached on some time ago uh, about Miriam and Aaron. They're just speaking against Moses. That was all. And God was in the cloud or the tabernacle and he heard it. And that cloud came off the tabernacle right now. He said, Come here. At the end of the conversation, he says, why weren't you afraid to speak against Moses? That wasn't even his house. That was just a man in his house. So let's take another look at how he behaved himself in God's house. Amen. 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 All right, that's it. Amen.